Hey guys, my name is Christian Taylor. Welcome back to Crayler Tech. And today I'm taking a look at an ExpressVPN router to see if it's worth the money. Using a VPN is critical to protecting your online privacy. It's also useful for unblocking Netflix shows if you wanna watch a series that's geo-restricted to other countries. ExpressVPN is my personal favorite VPN, so I thought it'd be nice to try running it on a router and see what the experience is like. If you're wondering which VPN is right for you, I've got an entire comparison video over on my main channel. Also, for full disclosure, ExpressVPN did send out this router for review. This is the Linksys WRT3200ACM, and it's the most high-end router recommended by ExpressVPN on their website. It's important to note that there are two ways you can purchase this router, or any ExpressVPN compatible router. You can either purchase it from Flash Routers for a premium, and it will come pre-installed with the ExpressVPN firmware already flashed on the router and ready to go, or you can save around $50 and buy the router on Amazon, which typically retails for around $250. I was sent the stock router without the firmware pre-installed, so I had to step through the process of flashing the ExpressVPN firmware on the router. There's this really handy interactive guide on the website, but essentially you'll download the latest firmware version, go to the manual update section of the Linksys panel, and upload the ExpressVPN firmware. The router will restart a few times, then you can go to expressvpnrouter.com to finish the setup. Here you'll enter your ExpressVPN activation code, work through some basic options, and you're up and running. My setup experience was relatively smooth, but it wasn't the easiest experience. When you flash the firmware, it takes a while for the router to install the firmware and be ready to use, but there's not much of an indicator to know when it's ready. You just wait a while, check to see if it's up, wait some more, check again, and eventually you'll get the router setup page to load. I was not able to set up the router with my Xfinity modem in bridge mode. For some reason, when I put the Xfinity modem into bridge mode, it kept dropping the network connection it was sending to the Linksys router. I'm thinking this is an issue with the Xfinity modem and not a problem with the Linksys router. So once I figured that out, I redid the setup process and created a separate network. This means I've got my normal Wi-Fi network through the Xfinity modem, then I've got the VPN specific network as well. So I'm going to segment the rest of this review into three sections. A review of the ExpressVPN firmware, a review of the Linksys router as it pertains to the firmware, and my thoughts on using a VPN router in general. Starting with a look at the ExpressVPN firmware, you can always access the settings by going to expressvpnrouter.com. On the main screen, you can connect or disconnect the entire router from the VPN, select your location, and view devices that are currently connected. I love that you can choose for individual individual devices to bypass the VPN. This would be useful if you've got some IoT devices or maybe a computer where you want the fastest speeds and just don't need that device going through a VPN. I noticed a lot of blank device names on this page. I'm not sure if that's a bug in the ExpressVPN firmware or if that's something to do with the Linksys router not indexing the device names properly, but it is a pretty big quirk. The rest of the panel is simple. You can choose your VPN protocol, edit the Wi-Fi network name and password, and do advanced things like port forwarding and dynamic DNS. I like ExpressVPN's simple approach to the management panel, and I don't have many complaints here. If anything, I wish they could implement more smart features that you'd see in systems like Nest Wi-Fi or Xfinity XFi, such as parental controls, advanced analytics by device, etc. Overall though, the panel is a pleasure to use and straightforward. So how well does the Linksys router function with the ExpressVPN firmware? Well, this is where things get disappointing. While connected to the router via ethernet and with the VPN disabled, I get the same speeds as I do using ethernet on my stock Xfinity router. This is generally the case with Wi-Fi as well, while disconnected from the VPN. The Linksys router may be a tiny bit slower than my Xfinity router in some circumstances, but for the most part, it matched speed pretty well. When connecting the router to ExpressVPN, speeds are much slower than using the ExpressVPN app locally on a device. I theorize this has to do with a lack of processing power and the router itself, 
but I'm certainly no expert. I got 900 megabits per second down via ethernet on the Linksys router while disconnected from ExpressVPN. While still disconnected at a router level, I launched ExpressVPN on my Mac and connected to the Atlantis servers using the Lightway protocol. I got 486 megabits per second down, which is consistent with the blazing fast speeds I'm used to from ExpressVPN. Now I disconnected from the VPN on the Mac app and connected the router itself to ExpressVPN. Same location, same protocol, and I got a disappointing 178 megabits per second down. Now, obviously this is one sample, but I got results consistent to this over and over and over again. I would think if anything, connecting your router directly to a VPN instead of your device would make for a faster connection. But I actually think that routers just lack the processing power to run VPNs efficiently. Maybe it's this Linksys model in particular, but it's a really hard sell for me to recommend using the WRT3200 ACM to run ExpressVPN. But let's step back and think about why you would want to use a VPN router in the first place. Is it even worth exploring? There's really two reasons you'd consider a VPN router. First, if you want to conveniently secure all devices in your house without having to download ExpressVPN to each device. But second, and this is most significant, is if you'd like to use a VPN on devices that do not support ExpressVPN natively, such as some smart TVs, game consoles, etc. There's also the argument that using a VPN router only counts as one connection. And when ExpressVPN allows only five connections at a time, a VPN router is a hack to bypassing this limit. You could have 50 devices connected to your VPN router, and that's still only gonna count as one connection. But you could only connect five devices using the ExpressVPN app on each device at the same time. I was able to stream region lock shows through Netflix on my Roku TV using the ExpressVPN router, and that's not something I could do without it. At the end of the day though, this Linksys router is a hard sell for me personally. I'd say if you're a streaming enthusiast who already uses and loves ExpressVPN, and you know it's worth it for you to have a dedicated VPN router to stream region lock shows on your TVs, or if you wanna connect more than five devices to ExpressVPN and you don't mind the slower speeds, it is worth considering this router. If, however, you just thought the idea of a VPN router was cool and figured you'd buy one, have all your devices instantly connected to ExpressVPN and carry on with your life, it's not that smooth or simple. You really need to weigh the pros and cons of using a VPN router to determine if it's the right solution for you. And I'm also aware that there are a lot of different VPN routers on the market. This is just one option that ExpressVPN sent me to test out, so your experience will definitely vary based on the model you pick. As for ExpressVPN itself, I have a lot of comparisons to other VPNs available on my main channel, but I personally love the speedy, smooth experience I've always had with ExpressVPN. So what do you think of VPN routers? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. Videos. Also be sure to check out my main channel over on Crayler Made, as this is my tech channel that I don't post too often, I just come here when I get the itch to review hardware, which I still do enjoy doing from time to time, but if you want to see more videos from me, definitely check out my main channel. And with that said, I'll catch you guys next time.